Hi, my name is Tere Sylvester. I'm a guide with Northwest Alpine Guides and Mountain Gurus. And today we're going to run through our gear check, the gear list we use for many of our climbs on the glaciated peaks of the Pacific Northwest. So this is the gear list we'll use for Mount Baker, Mount Shuxon, Mount Rainier, um, our three-day intro to mountaineering course, which is one of our most popular courses. Uh, you can find this gear list on our website, northwestalpineguides.com, under the Northwest Climbs Gear List tab. Uh, this gear list is also a great foundation for many of our international itineraries. And we're doing this video today in our guide hut in Cedro Woolley, Washington. Um, we offer most of the items that I'm going to be talking about for sale or for rent right here at the guide hut. So we'll start with our head and face. Um, so for every climb, we're going to want to bring a warm hat. Um, this is a nice one made by Himali. Uh, it's good because it doesn't have a big pom-pom or tassel on top of it. It'll fit under your helmet well. Um, and it's synthetic. We want to have a synthetic or a wool warm hat so that uh, when they get wet, they stay warm. Um, we also want to bring a buff or a balaclava to protect your face from wind and cold and also protect your skin from the sun. We're also going to want to bring a sun hat. Um, again, nice to have one that'll fit well under your helmet. So it's good to have like the build variety. You can also use one with a full brim, but these tend to fit under your helmet a little better. Um, and then the all important glacier glasses. We get a lot of radiation off the snowpack, so we want to have glacier glasses with good side protection. And then we want to also make sure that we bring um, sunscreen, at least SPF 30, and lip balm. And we want to have some SPF in the lip balm, some sun protection. This is SPF 30. We sell both of these at the guide hut. And we should bring, um, of course, a headlamp. We're gonna need these in camp, in our tents after dark, and then we'll use our headlamps too for the first few hours of our climbs during an alpine start before the sun comes up. Um, and with the headlamp, you wanna make sure you bring a spare set of batteries, or if you have a rechargeable headlamp, make sure you bring a battery pack and a power cord to charge that up. Okay, so moving on to the next section on our gear list. Uh, this is our upper body. Um, so starting from the inside out, uh, this is a nice lightweight base layer. We're going to want to bring two of these just in case, you know, one gets wet or sweaty during the trip. Uh, we want these to be long sleeved, protects our skin from the snow if we come in contact with it and also the sun if we're just wearing our base layer on the way down the mountain or during a sunny training day. And it's really nice to have a hood attached to your base layer. Uh, that again, really great sun protection on a warm day. So the next item, uh, we want to bring a mid-weight fleece. Um, again, it's nice to have a hood on these. If we have hoods on all of our upper body layers, sometimes we just don't need to bring a warm, a warm hat as well. Um, and I like having a zipper on this for ventilation, um, easier to put on over a helmet, things like that. So yeah, mid-weight fleece. And then a soft shell jacket. Uh, this is our first jacket layer. This one is made by Outdoor Research. Um, it's a little bit breathable. The wind will come through this, which helps, keeps you cool and dry um, if you're exerting. Um, this one has fleece on the inside, a little extra insulation. But this is not our hard shell layer. This is not like an impermeable barrier to protect us from the elements. Um, that's what our hard shell jacket is for. This is a super important item in the Pacific Northwest where we're often in a cloud or it can be a little bit rainy during a climb. Um, so this is what protects us from rain and snow. Again, nice to have a hood. They're essential. Um, and the hood should be spacious it's not enough that it can go around your helmet. Um, this is the Himali Monsoon. We rent and we sell these in our guide hut. And then the final layer, um, this is going to be our down jacket. Again, super critical for all the climbs we do. Even in the summer, it can be pretty chilly as we're climbing before dawn, especially when we take breaks sitting on the glacier at 8,500, 9,000 feet. It's really nice to have a warm down jacket to pull on while you're resting. Um, and then often, you know, as we're approaching the summit of Baker or Rainier, we might even be climbing in our down jacket too. Um, again, really essential to have a hood on these. And we want these to be medium weight, um, a full rugged, um, heavyweight expedition down parka. It's probably going to be a little bit of overkill for most of the ascents we do in the Pacific Northwest in the summer, but we want this to be at least this size, um, this amount of insulation. If you have a lightweight down sweater, that's probably not going to be sufficient for a summit day on a Pacific Northwest volcano. All right, so the next item on our gear list, um, our hands, our gloves. We want to bring a pair of soft shell gloves. 
These are our lighter weight, um, just a little bit of insulation and protection from the elements. Um, we'll wear these anytime we're on snow to, to protect our hands. These are nice because they have leather palms. These are made by Black Diamond. You can rent these from us or buy them. Um, and then we also want to bring a heavyweight pair of Gore-Tex gloves. These are for our summit days when it gets cold up high on the mountain. Again, I really like having a leather palm on my gloves. Just makes them more durable if I have to touch rock or just holding my ice axe. Um, and these have a Gore-Tex outer, so that's more protection for, from wind and rain and snow. Okay, so moving on to the next section on our gear list. Um, this is our lower body layers. Um, again, working from the inside out, the first layer of insulation on our lower body is going to be a lightweight base layer. It's just long underwear. Again, we want them to be synthetic or wool, not cotton, because synthetic and wool insulate better when they're wet. Um, and these are just long underwear for cold days in camp or while climbing. And then it's really important to bring a good pair of soft shell climbing pants. Um, these are going to be made out of synthetic material, usually shoulder. Um, and we want to strike a balance with these. We don't want these to be super lightweight, thin, just trekking pants. But for most of our climbs, we also don't need like a really heavy insulated pair with wind protection, uh, somewhere in between. Um, and then on the outside, we're always going to bring a pair of hard shell pants. Just like with our hard shell jacket, this is protection from wind, rain, snow. Uh, we want them to be Gore-Tex. And it's really important that we have a full length side zip. Uh, this comes all the way up and then I could open up the waist. And having this full length side zip allows me to put these on easily over my boots and crampons. If while I'm climbing, uh, the weather turns bad, it gets cold, we can keep moving and stay warm. Um, and we of course sell and rent these. Okay, moving on to our footwear. Um, we wanna bring three, three total pairs of socks. Um, we want to bring two pairs of medium weight wool or synthetic socks. This is what we'll wear, a little lighter weight, what we'll wear while we're hiking in um, or for training days down low near camp where it's warm out. And then we also want to bring one pair of nice, thick, uh, heavyweight mountaineering socks. And this is what we'll wear while we're climbing inside our boots. And we of course want to bring a pair of mountaineering boots. These are full shank, crampon compatible. We can use plastic mountaineering boots. We can use leather synthetic boots as well. Um, we rent a full selection of La Sportiva Nepal, which is a great all around boot for summer climbing in the Cascades. Okay, so moving on to the equipment we need for sleeping. Um, we want to bring a sleeping pad. Uh, when we're sleeping on the snow, uh, early season or on rainier climbs, you, you'll want to bring a closed cell foam pad. Um, these are nice and lightweight and great insulation from the snow beneath us. And then on all of our climbs throughout the season, it's a great idea to bring um, an inflatable pad. Um, so, you know, we rent Thermarests. Um, it's a great go-to brand, nice and light and packable. And of course, we also need to bring a sleeping bag. So, for our um, early season and later season climbs, when it can be a little colder in the spring and in the fall, uh, we recommend, recommend that you bring a zero to 10 degree bag. Um, in midsummer, when it's a little warmer, you'll probably be all right with a 20 to 30 degree bag. But of course, you know, talk to us beforehand and keep an eye on the weather forecast for your climb. Okay, so moving on to our backpack. Um, we want to bring a mountaineering backpack. Uh, most men's mountaineering backpacks are going to run in the 70 liter range. A women's backpack might be 60 or 65 liters. It's really important to have that much capacity because you're going to have to carry not only your own personal gear for the climb, but also a share of the group gear for many of our climbs. Uh, it's nice to have a pouch for crampons and also attachment points for your ice axe on the outside. Nice durable pack. And then also with your backpack, you're gonna to wanna to bring at least one trash compactor bag. And we'll use that to line the interior of the backpack to protect your stuff from rain in case it's wet when we're walking up to camp. So moving on to climbing equipment, um, starting with the head, we wanna bring a mountaineering helmet, climbing helmet, hard plastic, protects your head while we're climbing and they're gonna have attachment points for your headlamp. Super useful on early morning alpine starts. And then another critical piece of equipment, 
uh, your alpine climbing harness. This is an alpine bod, nice standard, lightweight, durable alpine climbing harness. Um, we rent these, of course. They come in a couple different sizes. And then our ice axe. Um, most climbers are going to use an ice axe in the 55 to 70 centimeter range. Um, if you're trying to figure out how to size your ice axe, it's nice to just sort of stand with it and let your arms hang naturally. The spike at the bottom should probably hang a little bit off the ground, kind of near your ankle bone around the cuff of your boot. Um, trekking poles are very useful while we're hiking up to high camp and then often we'll use one trekking pole while we're climbing, at least on Mount Baker, um, heading up to the crater or the saddle um, below the Roman wall. Um, and it's nice to have trekking poles that can extend and then telescope back in for easy packing. And also, of course, you can adjust the size while you're using them. Um, we also want to bring carabiners. Uh, we'd like you to bring two locking carabiners. Uh, locking carabiners come in a big variety of shapes and sizes, different locking mechanisms. Um, screw gate is fine. We do want you to have uh, pear-shaped large locking carabiners though. This will be your tie-in point on the rope and pear-shaped carabiners are really easy to work with. Uh, we would also like you to bring one non-locking carabiner, ideally a wire gate. Wire gate carabiners are lighter, um, just less weight in the pack. And then we want you to bring some six millimeter prussic cord, accessory cord. We can use this for making prussics, prussics while we're climbing um, and a lot of other purposes as well. So again, this is just six millimeter cord, 30 feet length. And of course, we need to use crampons. Um, crampons, again, come in a lot of different shapes and sizes, different binding methods, attachment methods to your boot. Um, but it's really important that you bring 12 point steel mountaineering crampons. Uh, steel will stand up better when you're walking on rocks um, in the course of a climb. And we like having anti-balling plates on the bottom of these as well to prevent snow from packing in to your crampons and making them slippery. Okay, so moving on to the final items on our gear list. Um, some smaller stuff, but super important. Um, our hydration while we're on the mountain. It's really important that you bring two wide mouth Nalgene bottles. Um, we sell these, you can find them in a lot of outdoor stores. We like the wide mouth because it's easier to fill up. Um, and then if you'd like, you can also bring a camelback or bladder style hydration system, but we don't want you to rely on this uh, for summit day because these, the hoses can freeze, the bags can get punctured easily. It's fine to use for an approach or has a backup in your backpack. For Summit Day, we really want you to have two one liter hard plastic wide mouth Nalgene's. And then other smaller items. Uh, of course, we wanna bring a lightweight bowl, an insulated mug for coffee and tea and camp, and a spoon, if you can get a Lexan spoon or just you know a spoon from your drawer. Um, and then we'll wanna bring a waste kit or a blue bag. These waste kits are nice. They come with toilet paper and a little bit of hand sanitizer in there. Um, when we're climbing on Rainier, on the upper mountain, and on Mount Baker, we adhere to leave no trace principles, of course. We want to keep the mountain clean for our parties and for every other user out there, so we carry out our waste. Uh, great idea to bring some hand sanitizer and other items. It's nice to have some cinch sacks, compression sacks to keep your things organized and compact in your backpack. Um, and we do recommend bringing some earplugs too just to help you sleep on windy nights or if your tent mate happens to be snoring, something like that. And of course, all of our guides carry full medical kits in our backpacks, um, but we also recommend that you bring your own personal medical kit. It can be just, you know, this size, containing some over-the-counter painkillers and, you know, things for blisters, um, mole skin, uh, second skin, and, you know, basic band-aids, things like that. Okay, well that wraps up our gear check. Um, again, that's the basic gear list for most of our climbs and courses in the Pacific Northwest. And you can find that whole gear list on our website at northwestalpineguides.com. <laughs>